Now, let's take a look at a demo of this section. Use labels to route workflows to specific runners. So first of all, we will create virtual machines that will act as runners and we can run our workflows on those runners. So those will be the self-hosted runners. So for that, I'm going to create virtual machines in DigitalOcean. Now you can create virtual machines on AWS, Azure, GCP, or any other virtual machines provider or cloud provider, but I'm going to use DigitalOcean. So it's easy to sign up for DigitalOcean and create a virtual machine. So I'm going to log in and then click on create droplets. And then it automatically selects a region and we are going to use Ubuntu basic regular CPU. We just need a lightweight virtual machine, the cheapest one for this demo. So I'm going to select the cheapest option that I have available. Uh, assign a password. And then all I need to do is create a droplet and this will create a virtual machine. Now uh, you do remember the password that you just provided here. So we are going to log in using that username and password and give it a few minutes while the virtual machine is being spun up and booted. So now the runner is provisioned. I'm going to click here and access console and then click on launch droplet console and this will log me in as a root user. So once I am logged in over here, it did not ask for username or password because I directly logged in from the console of DigitalOcean. So we already have a root user, but we won't be running our commands uh, on this runner as a root user. So let's add a new user. So I'm going to do user add or it should be add user, which we already have. I'm going to do add user. And assign a password. And just provide defaults for other. So now we have added a user. Now let's add the user to the sudo group. So it's just easier for us to run the commands in production settings. You may want to lock down the permissions further, but for the demo, Let's just add our new user to the sudo group. So the command is user mod dash ag sudo and the username. So now the user has been added to the sudo group. Now I'm going to clear my screen and let's go back to our GitHub console. Go to settings on the project that we are going to use. So I'm going to use our Node.js project. You can use any project you want. And then I'm going to click on actions and runners. So we don't have any runners configured. So I'm going to click on self-hosted runner Linux because we created a Linux based virtual machine. And over here you can select Mac OS or Windows if your virtual machine has that operating system. And now we are just going to run the steps and that will configure the runner. So I'm going to, first of all, uh, we are on our virtual machine. So let's do sudo and the user that we had created. So it's uh, su dash and the username. So now we are going to run the commands as that user that we had created. So all we need to do is just run through the commands. First of all, it's making a temporary directory. Then the next copy would be we are just downloading the package that is needed. And now let's validate the package. So I'm just copying the commands here. It's already provided by GitHub. We downloaded the package. Let's extract the package. And once the package is extracted, we are going to configure 
using a config.sh script that is already in that package it will configure the runner for us i'm going to do config.sh and we can see this banner over here and now it says it's connected to github but enter the name of the group and i'm going to leave it as default group and enter the name of the runner and i'm going to leave it as github actions runner too or you can update and change the name over here and what are the labels you want so the runner will already have these three labels but we let's say i want another label called certification so i can add that and the runner is added successfully and now it's saying enter the name of the work folder so i'm just going to hit enter and now we can see that the settings are saved so let's go back and now the last step is just run it so it's i'm just going to copy it i'm going to clear my screen so it's visible and just run run it now if we look over here it's just running and waiting for jobs i think i had already one job running that was looking for a runner and now it kicked off the job but we're going to go back to our node.js hello world go to action then just pick one job so i'm going to pick this main.yaml or and then instead it says runs on ubuntu you can say runs on certification because that is the label that we had provided or you could also provide a different label that it had self-hosted and other labels that we had seen so now this workflow name node.js ci will run on our new runner so let me commit the changes and and then let's go to actions and this is the workflow that we are interested in it's going to run on our new runner so it says queued build and it's running the job and you can see it's running the job build which is the current job that we are looking at and we're just waiting for the job to finish so it completed the job and it says the job completed successfully so that's how you can configure and use a self-hosted runner and if you go back to your settings and if you go to actions runners and we can see the runner over here the github actions runner to that we had provided and currently there are no jobs running and we can use this label runs on self-hosted we use certification and these are the four labels available we can add more labels from here as well that we can uh, utilize for our runner and now let's click on remove so this will give steps to decouple the runner from github actions uh, so we can you can follow the steps if you want to decouple so i'm just going to force remove this runner and that will remove the runner so now and that label will no longer be available so if you run a job with certification label or self-hosted it will be in a pending state looking for a runner so also make sure you remove your virtual machine from DigitalOcean or any of the cloud provider you had created. Otherwise, you will keep incurring the cost of the virtual machine as well.